These two laptops over here are one of the best 16 inch creator laptops that money can buy. This is Dell XPS 16 and this is Asus ProArt P16. This is not just Dell and ProArt going head to head because both of them have exactly the same GPU. One of them has the best Intel AI CPU right now and the other one has the best AMD CPU right now. So it's also Intel versus AMD. Which one is better for creators? Let's find out because there's some interesting surprises that I didn't expect. Let's go. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com and if you use the code TN20 you get an extra discount. Complete the purchase, copy the key, and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done! Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out hookies.com in the video description below. So firstly, in terms of design, both of them are very nice and minimalistic kind of creator laptops. I do have to give a bit of an edge here to Dell even though I absolutely love what Asus is doing with the ProArt series. But the Dell feels a lot more premium in terms of build quality and what it feels like. There is a downside as well, which is the weight. This Asus one is a lot more lighter than the Dell. It's... Whoa! The Dell is heavy because a lot of the chassis is made out of metal. Now, there are different colors of Dell available. You can get the black version as well, or whatever Dell calls it. Asus only comes with the black. Now, when we open them up, they're actually very, very similar inside. We have 16 inch screens. The keyboard is very, very similar. We've got the speakers on both sides. Very large trackpad. Wait a second. This one kind of doesn't have a trackpad. Well, this is one of the interesting Dell design features here. The trackpad is kind of just somewhere. As you can see, the mouse is moving. So somewhere around here, it ends. So the trackpad is actually very similar size to this one here. The trackpad on the Dell though is haptic, whereas on the Asus one here, it's on a hinge. So the trackpad is much nicer on the Dell compared to Asus. Asus does have a little edge here with the Asus style. So if you're doing creative you know, workflows in softwares like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve, this little scroll wheel here can do different things. You can turn it on by just pressing that little button on there and swiping that way. As you can see, you can do different things in here. That little light shows that this is on and you can turn it off just like that as well. Asus has all the function buttons and your you know, screen brightness, all physical buttons here, whereas Dell has them on the top as a touch pad, what Apple got rid of. So if you press function, they actually change, as you can see, to function and your screen or volume buttons. Both of them have a co-pilot button because they are co-pilot plus Windows laptops. Dell has one extra bit in terms of security, which is a fingerprint reader in there. Asus doesn't have a fingerprint reader, but both of them have Windows Hello IR sensors for the cameras. Now, very importantly for creators, the ports are very, very important. Underneath, you can see a little bit of the grill design difference as well. But if we are looking at the right side of the laptop, on Asus one, we've got an SD card slot, USB type A, 10 gigabits in speed, and a USB 4 port. The Dell one here, interestingly, I actually found that out by accident. The right side is not a Thunderbolt port. It's just a USB type C, I believe it's 10 gigabits in speed, and then a micro SD card slot and a headphone mic combo jack. The full size SD card slot is so much more useful than the micro SD card slot. So I've got to give an edge here to a pro art. And when we're looking at the other side of the laptop, we have got a USB type C port, two of them from Dell. They're both Thunderbolt 4. On Asus, we've got the power brick, you know, DC in, HDMI out, another USB type 4 port, another USB type A, 10 gigabits in speed, and a mic and headphone combo jack. Now, I've got to give the edge here to Asus in terms of the ports. Dell does come with this tiny little dongle, which is a little bit weird. You can plug that one in, you get an HDMI port and USB Type-A, but you're still going to lose one of your USB ports. 
and if you charge your laptop with the other one you're going to lose another one so that's not very good when talking about chargers the dell comes with usb-c charging block and you can use any of the usb ports to charge the laptop the asus one comes with their own connector which is this kind of a small little square connector that goes into there and that is a 200 watt power break dell 130 watts so asus is a lot more powerful but also a little bit more inconvenient because if you just want to use usb-c charging on the asus it's not going to be enough to get the full performance out of the laptop you're going to have to use that part in there so let's take a look at the specs comparison one of them has the ryzen ai 9 hx 370 cpu and then the dell xps has intel core ultra 9 185h both of them a bit of a mouthful to say the p16 on asus here has a 12p core cpu 12p cores we haven't seen that on a laptop or mobile before which is very interesting the intel though here has a 6p core and 8e core cpu but in terms of threads because the e cores don't have multi-threading we have 22 threads and then the p16 has 20 four threads the intel one still has the low power efficiency cores extra two of them so in total the intel still has 24 threads but really i don't really know what the low power efficiency cores do there in terms of turbo boost both of the laptops boost to 5.1 gigahertz which look very very similar both of them have sold it on ram both you can get up to 64 gigabytes although my dell version here has 32 gigabytes because i couldn't buy i didn't want to spend that much extra to get the 64. if you're a creator when you're choosing these laptops get the maximum ram configuration don't go with a 32 gigabyte version me just for a review i probably don't need the 64 gigabyte if you're getting this laptop highly recommend getting the full maximum ram configuration what you can buy links in the description below in terms of the ram speed asus one runs 7500 megatransfers per second compared to the 7467 so little edge on the amd there in terms of power draw the p16 pulls 80 watts when plugged in and so does the dell but when we unplug the laptop interestingly the dell still pushes 80 watts through whereas asus only caps at 35 watts in terms of maximum cpu power draw both of them have the same dedicated gpu the igpu is different radeon 89m and we have the 8 core intel arc gpu in terms of nanometers the process node on the p16 is a 4 nanometer from tsmc and then the xps on intel is intel 4 which is a 7 nanometer interestingly they're still using the tsmc to provide the chips not intel's own chips the pricing that's where things are very interesting here the Dell goes over $3,000 when you go with a 64 gigabyte version. When you go with 32, with these specs here, it's around 2,800 or 3,000, somewhere around there. The Pro Art is around $2,500. Now, check out the latest pricing in the description below and let me know what the pricing is at your local store or your local you know, area. But the Pro Art has a massive advantage in terms of pricing, quite a bit cheaper let's take a look how these perform we're taking a look at cinebench r24 and also the capabilities of battery versus plugged in the rest of the benchmarks are plugged in but i also want to know how much performance are we going to be losing in the worst case scenario when we are plugged in and unplugged so firstly looking at the single core performance plugged in the p16 amd is actually 7.4 percent faster even though the boost clock is the same 5.1 gigahertz but amd's ipc instruction per clock are much better meaning we're getting a better single core score and the multi-core score again 27.9 percent faster that is a huge advantage on the pro art when running the tests for 10 minutes and both of the devices start to throttle we can see that the p16 doesn't throttle as much and actually gains a little bit of performance around 39 percent now increase compared to the xps 16 and then the 30 minute throttle tests were about 32.8 percent faster that is a huge win for asus now unplugging the laptops looking at the battery power interestingly now p16 is actually slower in single core and multi-core score 
about 2.8% slower in the single core and about 2.3% in the multi-core score. When comparing both of these devices plugged in versus unplugged in, you can see that the XPS 16, when on battery power, in terms of single core performance, we're not gonna be losing a lot, about 1.9%, it's honestly negligible and within margin of error. In terms of multi-core score, you can kind of see that performance difference now about 3%, but again, just over the margin of error. So we can see that Dell has constructed and designed this laptop to perform the same, whether you're plugged in or unplugged. But ProArt here is losing quite a lot of power when unplugged, around 11.2% in single core score and about 26% in multi-core score. So on battery, yes, they're kind of the same, but when plugged in, the Asus has an advantage. Now, let's plug these devices in and let's take a look at the different benchmark scores here. In Geekbench 6, we can see that the Pro Art is about 17% faster in single core score and about 12% faster in the multi core score. Again, pure CPU performance is better on the Pro Art. Moving on to actual applications in Puget Bench for Photoshop, here we can see that the P16 is around 9% faster in the overall score, 7.2% faster in the general score, and about 10.7% faster in the filter score. Moving on to a different photo editing application, the Lightroom Classic, we can see that the P16 is faster again in the overall score compared to the XPS 16. 9.5% and 23.8% faster in the passive score. Interestingly, the active score is actually better on the XPS, which kind of doesn't make a lot of sense for me. Now, I do want to mention that in this test, I have 32 gigabytes on the XPS and 64 gigabytes on on the Pro Art P16, which actually does give a little bit of an edge in certain applications for the P16. Now, if you match the RAM capacity to the P16, the gaps will be closer, but I still think the P16 actually wins because these benchmarks are not that RAM bottlenecked. Moving on to video editing and the Puget Bench for Premiere Pro, we can see that the P16 is 12% faster in the extended overall scores and about 16.6% faster in the standard overall overall scores. Now, the Asus is absolutely whooping the XPS, even though the Intel version should be faster in, you know, for certain codecs, it's not that big of a difference. Interestingly, long GOP on the XPS is slightly faster. As you can see, the P16 is about 7% slower in the long GOP scores in extended and about 6.4% in the standard scores. So when working with H.264 and 5, the Intel one is better because of the iGPU and the media support. Although when looking at the intro frame score, the P16 is 35% faster, which is absolutely ridiculous. And even the GPU effects standard are about 11% faster on the P16, even though we're running exactly the same GPU. But we're gonna get to that point when looking at the 3D performance. In After Effects, unfortunately, the P16, for some reason, doesn't wanna run the benchmark, no matter how much I much massage it. So we're gonna have to give a little bit of a win here for the XPS, even though when working with After Effects, both of the applications run normally, but the benchmark just doesn't wanna run on the P16. So a little bit of an edge for XPS maybe? Looking at Puget Bench for DaVinci Resolve, the XPS 16 doesn't wanna run the extended score now. So XPS now is acting up a little bit. I don't know if this is the RAM capacity, but some of the other lower RAM capacity devices can run it. So I'm not sure what's going on in there. The P16 is quite a bit faster. 15% faster in the basic score. Bear in mind the basic means the free version of the Venture Resolve, and then the standard overall, which is paid version, is again 15% faster. And you can see that the standard scores are from 10 to 22% faster in all of them. So the P16, again, gets a big win in DaVinci Resolve. Now, when moving on to 3D performance, in Blender, the P16, probably because of the newer architecture, doesn't wanna run the benchmark again. So the XPS seems to be winning here, even though I think if the benchmark did work, the Dell would be a better 
pick because it's very well like kind of a correlated with the Cinebench R24 scores. So whatever is better at the multi-core there, usually you'll see that the same on the Blender scores. So the Blender works, the software works, but just the benchmark doesn't want to run as well. Looking at V-Ray, we can see that the P16 is 38% faster in the CPU score. And here we can see when utilizing all the 12p cores, we are actually whooping the Intel CPU. And that's what I would expect to happen in Blender as well. But the CUDA, even though having the same GPU on both, the P16 is 34% faster in the CUDA and about 25% faster in the RTX cores. You're saying, what is going on? They're the same GPU. We're gonna get to that. Look at all the benchmarks. When looking at Octane Bench, again, we're utilizing only the GPU, rendering on the Nvidia cards, both of them run the latest drivers, exactly the same, plugged in, all the settings are the same, but the P16 is about 22.3% faster. What is going on? Redshift, another 3D rendering application. When plugging both of the devices in, you can see that the P16 is about 14.7% faster compared to the XPS 16. When running it for 10 minutes, the gap goes even bigger to 18.3% faster and the 30 minutes kind of goes a little bit down 18% faster. Now, interestingly, when unplugging the devices, suddenly the XPS 16 is actually a better performer. The P16 is 5.6% slower. So let's talk about it. What is going on here then? Basically, when engineering the device and the GPU and the power delivery, Dell has decided that for the RTX 4070, they're only going to supply up to 60 watts. Now, I'm seeing up to 50 watts being drawn when running Fermat, but the ProArt P16 is pushing around 105 watts to the GPU, which is double the power draw, and that's why it gets such a better score. At the same time though, when you unplug in the device, the Dell is better. So I believe that the XPS has better engineered power delivery for the GPU and trying to get the most efficient sweet spot where you get the best performance out, whether you're plugged in or unplugged. Now, if the option was up to me, I would rather have more performance plugged in than the same performance, you know, plugged or unplugged because right now when you're plugging the device in the p16 you're actually going to get extra performance compared to the xps where nothing really changes when you plug the device in or not maybe a little bit looking at the speedometer and the browser test the xps 16 is actually quite a bit faster the p16 is 30 percent slower and I'm not sure what's going on in there. Both of them are running the same browser, but it seems to be better on Intel platform. Final little things that are different. In terms of the speakers, both of the speakers are absolutely amazing. I've got to give a little edge to the ASUS. When comparing them side by side, you can hear that the ASUS has a little bit of a better low end. It's a lot more clearer on some of the instruments that play on the lower end of the frequencies, where the Dell is very, very crisp and it feels like the bottom end just kind of drops off. There's, there's nothing there. I'm not saying it's muddy, it's very clear. I do think the Dell speakers go a little bit louder. In terms of the overall one, I think Asus wins on the speaker side. And finally, we're gonna have to look at the screens. Now, both of these screens are OLED screens and they are a touch screen. Now, both of the screens are the same resolution. We've got a 4K OLED displays and they're both absolutely amazing. On the specs, the P16 should be brighter. It's 400 nits and then 500 nits on HDR. But looking at these two, I can clearly see that the Dell is brighter on these light tracks, for example, there. It's a lot brighter screen there 
than what we have over here. The Dell seems to have a little bit of a bigger screen. When I'm putting the side by side and matching the top of the screen, the Dell actually goes further down below. So I'm not sure if what's going on in there, but the P16 has a bigger chin compared to Dell, even though having the same resolution and screen size. The XPS 16 has a 90 hertz panel compared to the 60 hertz on the P16. Both of them are 10 bit, but Asus comes with the Asus Pen 2.0. So in overall, looking at the screen, I think the Dell is a little bit better and smoother because of the 90 hertz, although the Asus Pen 2.0 gives ProArt P16 another edge. So the screens are very, very similar. The downside for Asus is it's only 60 hertz compared to 90. Which one of these devices should you be getting? Which one is better? In terms of pure performance and for creators, I think the Asus is better because you're gonna get so much more bang for your buck. At the same time, Dell is very good. And if you find them on a sale somewhere, that could be a very good option as well. When using both of these devices, Battery life test, I'm gonna have to do in another video, but it feels like the Pro Art P16 is a little bit better on battery life and consuming the battery life. So which one would you pick? Let me know in the comment section below.